Hey VC, it's Jonathan, the Cheap and Cheerful Record Collector. I hope everybody's doing well out there today. <clears throat> so this is going to be hopefully the beginning of a series of videos I'm going to be doing called They Say It's Your Birthday. So starting today, I'm going to be featuring different musicians whose birthday it is that particular day uh, in different music, um, jazz, rock, folk, uh, blues, country, whatever. Um... But before I get going, I wanted to put a big thank out, thank you to uh, everybody who has been subscribing recently. I've recently reached over 2,000 subscribers, which, like I said, never in a million years I ever expect to have that. I figured I have 200, 250 subscribers, I'd be happy. But yeah, I've, I've reached that 2,000 subscriber mark, which is just ridiculous to me. I really appreciate people taking their time out of their day to spend a couple of minutes with me watching my silly videos. Uh, if you like what you see, Please do subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, make a comment. I always try to answer all comments. And um, let's get started with the video. So today is May 30th. And born in 1909. Was a seminal jazz musician. And it is the, was the great Benny Goodman. Uh, this is the record from the 1938 concert at Carnegie Hall. Which was uh, record-breaking uh, when I think one of the first times they ever had jazz at Carnegie Hall. Um, yeah, Benny Goodman, born 1909, died in 1986. In 1936, Benny Goodman broke the walls down and did something no one else had done and performing in public for the first time with an interracial band. Um, I guess the interracial bands have performed small clubs around the country, Very, but he did it. He was very well known. He was as big as, in his time as Elvis was in his time, as the Beatles were in their time. And for him to come out with an interracial band was something that had never been done before. And this is with um, Teddy Wilson, a black man on piano, Benny Goodman, a Jewish man on clarinet, and uh, Gene Krupa on drums. I don't know Gene Krupa's uh, background. But yeah, that was, that was a trio, uh, two white guys and a black guy, and it, it had never been done before, and... He couldn't perform in the South. They had all sorts of trouble. But he said, the first time he sat down and played with Teddy Wilson, he said, it's like we were thinking of one mind. It was just kismet. It just came all together. So this is a, a UK pressing, um, Benny Goodman Trio and Quartet, 1937-1938. So this also includes, um, on vibraphone, Lionel Hampton. Yes. So there's that. I also have... Benny Goodman Trio with Teddy Wilson and Gene Krupa. This is for the Fletcher Henderson Fund, uh, fund. also a, a UK pressing. Pretty neat. Also, uh, Benny Goodman, the small groups. This is a little later pressing, but also features uh, Goodman, uh, Teddy Wilson, Lionel Hampton, uh, sometimes uh, Joe Kirby on bass, etc. Great stuff. Here's a uh, album of them when they got back together again years later. This is the Benny Goodman Together Again, the quartet with Lionel Hampton, Gene Krupa, and Teddy Wilson. I had a lot more Benny Goodman. I sold all my all his big band stuff and kept basically the trios and the quartets, the smaller band stuff, which I really enjoyed more. This is Benny Goodman Live at Carnegie Hall, the 40th anniversary so from the first one I showed you, 1938, the original is 1978. Sorry about the glare. So there you go. And the last one I have by Benny Goodman is uh, on stage, uh, recorded live in Copenhagen in 1977. There's Benny. And um, some great pictures inside. And this included uh, the All-Star Sextet with Benny Goodman, John Haley, Zoot Sims, Billy Giffer, Bucky Pizzarelli, Harold Gaylor, and Elmer Mousy Alexander on drums. Um, I was lucky enough to see Benny Goodman in Central Park in New York City in the early 70s. They used to have concerts at the Woolman Skating Rink, and they were $1 to get in on summer nights. Um... The concert started early, like 6.30 or 5.30, because they had to be out of there by dark, because the, all the rich people on uh, Central Park South would complain about the music. But for a dollar, 
you'd go and see all sorts of bands. And one time I went, we saw Benny Goodman band, probably at 72 or 70, yeah, 71, 72. It was pretty great. All right, one more, another person, sorry, born on this day, on May 30th in 1955, was Topper Hedden from The Clash. Um, there's The Clash. He uh, joined The Clash in 1977. The first album with them was Give Him Enough Rope, which I do not have a copy of. And then he performed on The Clash album, which I have two copies of, uh, a UK and a US copy. One is from, um, this one on the left, on my left, is from Holland. This is a U.S. pressing. They have similar songs, but there are definitely different songs on both uh, records, so it's great to have both copies of that. He also performed on one of the great rock albums of all time, London Calling. On Sandinista... He um, played on this. He also was the vocalist for When Ivan Meets G.I. Joe. This is a great UK pressing on this, which I picked up. Original price, $5.95. And then he was on Combat Rock. And actually on the song Combat Rock, he wrote most of the music, played the drums, piano, and bass guitar. So he was all over that song, Combat Rock, which I absolutely love. And I got to see The Clash, actually, right after Mick Jones had left. Um, so it so was like the, the second incarnation of the band. Still great to be able to see Strummer back in the day. So those two guys' birthdays today. Also, there is a jazz uh, piano player, Dave McKenna, and this is his album. Um, just called Dave McKenna. It is a solo piano album recorded in 19... Da, 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 I don't have a date, sorry. Uh, 77, October 1977. Really good piano player. Um, known very well within jazz circles, but not well known without the jazz... Uh, with Not in the jazz circles, but he's a, a great player. Really enjoyed this record. He was born in 1930. Oh, I'm sorry, Topper Hedden left the Clash in 1982. Um, they said it was for medical reasons, but basically he was a, a heroin addict and, uh, it got to so bad he couldn't, uh, Strummer and the band couldn't, couldn't deal with it. So they had to kick him out. And one more born today, which I don't have any of his albums, so I can't show it, is Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine, born today in 1964. So I hope to keep this up and have more videos in this series. Uh, maybe not every day, but, uh, every time I find a, uh, a musician whose birthday it is, and I have albums of them to show. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, stay tuned for the next one, which hopefully will be in a day or two. Actually, tomorrow, because i got a couple of for tomorrow already set in mind. Um, again, thanks again to all the people who uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, keep it up. Thanks so much. Hey, until next time, peace.